Mrs. Thatcher. Your Majesty. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 The Crown actors who sound nothing like their characters. Which is why they try to intimidate me and ridicule me, make me seem paranoid or mad. I'm not. For this list, we'll be looking at the cast members of The Crown who have to do the most work to achieve those real-life accents. Let us know whose accent you think is the best in the comments. Number 10, Bertie Carvel. A recent addition, Carvel first appeared in the very last episode of Series 5 as incoming Prime Minister Tony Blair, continuing into the sixth season. Well, a new dawn has broken, has it not? We have been elected as new Labour and we will govern as new Labour. As anyone who remembers Blair's time in Downing Street knows, he has quite a distinct way of speaking, making him a boon for comedian impressions everywhere. And as we head into the millennium, we have the opportunity to change Britain. Carvel isn't doing an impression, however. He's trying to accurately portray Blair. And while he doesn't look at all much like him, he does get Blair's voice down impeccably. And I want to say, if this meeting is about the decommissioning of the yacht, I want you to know, especially in light of having been shown around her today, how bad I feel. Carvel hails from London himself, while Blair moved around a lot as a child, including spending time in Australia and then in Durham. It's definitely a tricky role to get right, especially when he's following in Michael Sheen's footsteps. Number 9, Erin Doherty. Brought on to play Princess Anne, the Queen's only daughter in Series 3, Erin Doherty is certainly one of the cast members who looks the most like her real-life counterpart. I wonder what's more dull, having to sit through one of those meetings or having to watch it on television. Seeing side-by-side -side images, it's actually rather spooky. But thanks to the work of the Crown's dialect team, she also sounds exactly like her. It's well, I did warn Do not say you warned me. I did. It was always a daft idea, it was always going to backfire. In reality, Doherty doesn't speak in the clipped, uptight RP of the Princess Royal, as she grew up in Crawley in West Sussex. So, she does have a southern accent, but certainly not an upper-class one. How are the other students? Short, hairy and angry. What? Isn't that what the Celts are like? But interestingly, they both had athletic careers, with Doherty almost becoming a professional footballer and Princess Anne competing in the Olympics in horse riding. Number 8. Matt Smith Prince Philip is another figure subject to popular impressions, thanks to his low voice and penchant for offensive gaffes. I've told you this already. Maybe I've forgotten. Maybe you should listen a little more carefully next time. In some ways, Matt Smith, born and raised in Northampton, couldn't be further away from Philip, former Prince of Greece and Denmark but he pulled off the role extraordinarily well. Well, our adventure is only two weeks old, and it's already taken us nearly 20,000 miles as we travel the far corners of the world. He was already nearly as tall as the late Duke of Edinburgh and had to dye his hair blonde to play him in his youth. Philip's accent was nailed as well, though he doesn't grumble as much as the Duke was known to in his later years. I have never abused my privileges and I don't intend to start now, but this is the royal yacht. I am on it representing the crown and I say turn it around and take this man home. Despite Philip constantly being derided as a foreigner, he sounds just as posh as the rest of them. Number 7. Josh O'Connor Born in Berkshire, O'Connor spent most of his childhood in Gloucestershire, raised by working-class parents. I'm very grateful for all this. I hope you'll be able to put your feelings to one side. I gather you're a Welsh nationalist. This is strangely coincidental, as royalists will know that following his marriage to Diana, then Prince Charles decided to make Gloucestershire his base of operations. Highgrove House in the country is still a main residence of the King and Queen Consort. I can't ever be a son of Wales, but I am working on the Welsh speaking part. However, suffice to say that most people from Gloucestershire sound nothing like the King, and O'Connor, like the rest of the cast, had a lot of lessons to get the voice down. Perhaps better than his accent, however, were his mannerisms as the king, with his performance winning him an Emmy and a Golden Globe. Isn't there a similarity between my predicament and the Welsh? Am I listened to in this family? 
Am I seen for who and what I am? No. Do I have a voice? Rather too much of a voice for my liking. Number six, Emma Corinne. And you like that one because? It's the most expensive. No. Because it reminds me of my mother's engagement ring. And it's the same colour as my eyes. The People's Princess has been tackled time and time again in film and TV, with few able to get her mannerisms and very distinct accent correct. Prince of Wales and I are incredibly grateful that you've all uh, come out here to join us this evening in support of a cause that's incredibly close to our hearts. She spoke with a highly unique lilt to all of her sentences, which has become the bane of actors everywhere trying to betray her. Emma Corinne is certainly one of the best performers to tackle Diana, and has spoken at length about how they prepared to do her voice. Well, that's what I keep asking myself. What's she got to do with anything? But obviously, she's got a lot to do with everything because you can't leave her alone. Corinne also shared an interest in dance with the Princess of Wales and was often seen dancing and roller skating as Diana throughout series four. Number five, Gillian Anderson. His golf clubs will be in the hallway. He will come and go as he pleases. He knows how busy I will be and how hard I intend to work. She grew up on both sides of the Atlantic, which is why you'll often hear her switch between English and American accents flawlessly. But Anderson still had to work extensively with numerous dialect coaches to perform as the Iron Lady herself. I will not be drawn on any subject save the weather. It's a lovely day. Nobody else in the world sounds or has ever sounded like Margaret Thatcher, and this is thanks to her growing up in Grantham, Lincolnshire, and then trying to sound upper class to blend in with the other Tories. The way those men patronise me, lecture me, squires and grandees. The result was strange, to say the least, but Gillian Anderson was phenomenal. She also had to wear a lot of elaborate wigs to mimic Thatcher's style, if you can call it that. Number four, Olivia Coleman. Here's Master Bevins is very kind. He's also a barefaced liar. Although Coleman has recently made a name for herself playing various royals, winning an Oscar for her turn as Queen Anne in The Favourite, she's actually from Norwich. You definitely wouldn't know it listening to her play Queen Elizabeth II, as she does Her Majesty's rather extreme RP impeccably. In interviews, she revealed that the Crown's dialect coach is always on set, and his assistance was often employed when Coleman couldn't get certain vowel sounds and accidentally sounded too working class. I'd like to think you had that sinking feeling on another occasion recently when going to see your friends at the Bank of England. But there is something Coleman got wrong, the Queen's eye colour. If we all had to thank one another every time we did anything in this family, we'd never get anywhere. Apparently, this is because she looked too weird with either CGI'd blue eyes or contacts, so the choice was made to stick with her natural brown eyes. Number three, Elizabeth Debicki. The second and last actor to take on Diana, Princess of Wales, Elizabeth Debicki debuted in series five. It'll all be fine. If you ever feel sad or lonely, you can just look out of the window and give Granny a wave. Not only was she following Emma Corrin, though, she also had Kristen Stewart's performance in Spencer to look at, in which she surprised everyone by doing such a good job. Debicki was also able to get Diana's voice down, which was all the more impressive, considering she's Australian. Which is why they try to intimidate me and ridicule me, make me seem paranoid or mad. I'm not. Going from Australian to upper-class English is definitely a bigger accent leap than many of the Crown's cast have had to make. Debicki was also excellent at Diana's body language. I'm worried do you think I'm this huge thing. This great big glamorous celestial thing to be scared of. You are? No, I'm not. She is, however, notably taller than Diana. While the princess was surprisingly tall at 5'10, Debicki is 6 foot 3. Number 2, John Lithgow. A mainstay in the first two series and the only cast member who wasn't recast for series 3, as he appeared in one scene in the first episode, John Lithgow is one in a long line of actors who have betrayed Winston Churchill, the UK's most enduringly popular Prime Minister. Dear Winston. Your Majesty. Don't move. How are you? <sighs> Gripped. Ow. But he's not even British. 
He's American, born and raised in New York. This makes it even more impressive that he was able to not only do a perfect English accent, but a perfect Churchillian one. Let us start with the unrest in Egypt, where anti-colonial passions continue to run high and where our soldiers continue to come under fire from nationalist insurgents. Churchill himself was extremely aristocratic in real life and was a member of the Spencer family, making him a cousin of the Princess of Wales. Winston people are angry. They see us as the culprits. Culpable for what? It's fog. Fog is fog. It comes and it goes away. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Claire Foy It has come to my attention that for a period of time last week, my Prime Minister was incapacitated. If you've only seen her in The Crown, you may be amazed to learn that Claire Foy is from the North. No, it is not my job to govern, but it is my job to ensure proper governance. She spent most of her childhood in Stockport, Manchester and Leeds, none of them places that really make you think of royalty. Because of this, Foy has spoken about the difficulty in mastering the Queen's English to play the late monarch, specifically words like house and because. We understand that in the turbulence of this anxious and active world, many of you are leading uneventful lonely lives. Her northern accent definitely doesn't come through as much now, post frown, like the rest of the cast. Foy credits dialect coach William Conacher with training her to get it right. Happy Christmas. 25 years ago, my grandfather broadcast the first of these Christmas messages. Today is another landmark. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.